Well, hello everybody, it's Brad with the Big Family Homestead and today I've got a treat with you. I have with, well, I, I'm just so excited because this is Pastor Tyler Woods. Hi Tyler, how are you? Hello everybody, how you doing? Doing well, um, better now known as the Bulletproof Pastor and we're going to talk about that a little bit, but this is a question that that I asked Tyler that blossomed into a talk that blossomed into this recording because of all this craziness going on in the world and um, me wanting to be able to keep track with my family communications. And I called Tyler, Tyler Woods, the bulletproof pastor, and I asked him, said, well, tell me about two-way radios. And he goes, well, let me tell you. And I had no idea there was so much to it. But, and we're going to talk about that. But today, first of all, thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing your time and your knowledge. But tell me, what what's with the bulletproof pastor thing, man? That sounds pretty cool. You know, well, it sounds kind of arrogant if you think about it on human terms. But uh, Christ says that we are bulletproof, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We are, uh, and, and when we take unto ourselves the whole armor of God, we're protected. So I'm bulletproof by his protection, not by my own might. And as such, as long as my um, I've got a purpose here on earth, uh, nothing can touch me. And when that's up, I get to go to heaven. It, you can't beat it. It's bulletproof. Sounds like a pretty sweet deal to me. So, okay, communications. Uh, with all this craziness that's going on, I started asking questions, the logical stuff, like what if I couldn't get in touch with my wife or what if I had to go to the store to get medicine because I've got back pain medicine like my back is messed up what if I what if I have to do this and all of a sudden lo and behold this thing decides it's not going to work anymore the cell phone what happens then and so I called you and you said well you know what I actually have uh, done a little bit of research on this and so I'd like to start by asking what are the basic options you have if you want to stay in communication with somebody, and the cell phone is not an option. Well, let me let me give you two really quick uh, foundational stories that makes the importance of having communications there. We were up in Seattle, and uh, we lived in Olympia. We were up in Seattle uh, back then in the ancient of days. Uh, that was a about an hour's drive. Today, it can take four hours just because of traffic, and um, but we were there at a at a uh, political meeting when the earthquake hit. It was a big earthquake that that rocked the Pacific Northwest, as though they don't have very many of those anyway. Um, and I grabbed my cell phone immediately and I called my parents and wanted to make sure they were okay. Well, I speed dialed them within within probably ten seconds of the of the earthquake ending. And I got a hold of my parents. I talked to them for no more than 15 seconds to let them know that we're okay. Glad to know they're okay. I'm calling home. And then speed dialed my house where the kids were. All circuits busy. Yeah. In under 30 seconds. And wow. like I said, this was back in the ancient of days. So we, we actually found a cell, a, excuse me, not a cell phone, but a you know those boxes of telephones where you put coins in the top? It's really I've heard of the might myth. Find them in a museum today. I've heard that those things were were proven that that was just a myth. They never existed. Yeah, well, the the, the flat earthers grabbed them all up and stored them away. <laughs> but, but they had a there they're was selling, a tape phone. They're selling them along with toilet paper over on the corner. That's it. And and I found a payphone. And that landline worked, and I called my children and found out they were okay. Now they know we're okay. We'll get home as soon as we can. Uh, catch you later. And then I had one other phone call to try to make, and when I put the coins in there and dialed that number, I got the fast busy. I'm sorry, all circuits are busy. Mm -hmm. So within five minutes, all cell phone and all landlines were Locked gone. Up. Gone. So then... Uh, so, yeah, that'd be a nice time to have a radio, you know. The other one is Hurricane Harvey. Currently, we live a bicycle ride from where the eye of the storm hit. 
Oh. And this place, I was back here. Uh, I, we left late that afternoon on Friday, and I took my wife up to uh, her brother's house up in Colleen, Texas, Harker Heights area near Fort Hood. And that's where we spent the night. And then I left her there as I drove back down to make sure that our animals were okay and take care of that. It was a war zone down here. There was no power. There was no communication. There was no nothing. And um, it, it literally, I haven't seen that kind of destruction short of a war zone. And yeah. the um, when I got here at the house, fortunately, our house was standing. Uh, I We lost trees. We lost 45 feet of a one board fence. That's a tornado. So we had tornadoes sweeping through the property. Everything was messed up. The roof, uh, most of the shingles were gone. Half of the shingles on my barn were tripped, were stripped down to the tar paper. It was, this place was messed up. But I got on my radio. I'm a licensed ham operator. And I got on my uh, HF radio and I contacted, I, I, run out, I ran out a, a ground wire antenna and I reached Missouri. And Missouri was able, they were a close, uh, a good connection. They were able to call my daughter up in Olympia and let them know that I'm okay. Then I, uh, a little bit later, I made a, a really solid contact with Canyon Lake up near San Antonio. It's about a four hour drive from here. And that connection was so solid, I was able to get a voice patch and talk to my wife at her brother's house. Wow. They were out of the destruction zone really would be nice to have radio because nobody else could make those calls. There was no right. cell phone, no internet, no telephone, no power. There wasn't a whole lot of nothing. So anybody says that ham radio communications are dead have never gone through one of those things. Well, so, I can, I can, I can understand that, especially how dependent we've become to our cell phones for everything. Don't, don't get me started on directions. <laughs> Learning how to read a map is kind of an important thing. Yes. But, but we we are strapped to these devices anymore. Oh, yeah. And it's just kind of become part of life. But when those moments where life is not normal, when all of a sudden there's a hurricane or something bad happens or heck, a virus, what happens then if all of a sudden the cell communications are down? And that's what made me really start to consider well, what am, what am I doing in, not, in that area of preparedness in my life? Because, yeah, we got our food and we've, we've got our beans and we've got all our Second Amendment items and all that kind of stuff. But communications are vitally important. And so take me, take me down the road. What are our basic options if cell phone is not an option? Okay. Very popular today is I'm going to just mention it. A little bit and then we're moving on because it doesn't deserve anything other than a don't go there. FRS, family radio service. These are half watt little handy talky things. That you get uh, at Walmart. The, yeah. And they Those are little things that come on and the, the packs that are hanging there and they say yep. 20 miles and it's a lie. They are not 20 miles. <laughs> they are only advertised. Uh, when you force them to force their feet to the fire and make them tell the truth, they only advertise that they are two miles. And all I can say is, yeah, in your dreams, uh, yeah, two yeah, miles, yeah. maybe from the space shuttle to the, you know, to the uh, ISS on a good day <laughs> when, right. it's, when, it, when they're both in space and there's nothing between them. So FRS, family, FRS? Fam, uh, family radio service. They are unlicensed little half watt. Uh, walkie-talkies. They might work well in Walmart um, as long as you're not in the freezer aisle. And uh, the nice part about FRS is if the person that you're talking to uh, can't make out what you're saying, you turn the thing off and speak louder and they'll be able to hear you. Oh. So just, <laughs> the range is very limited. They are not what you want. You're wasting your money. There is another one, and that's called GMRS, General Mobile Radio Service. This is an upgrade. These are five watts. They're UHF, and they're really. Let me let me hold on. Let me let me yep. uh, pause right there because I've done a little bit of research enough to get me into trouble. Um, <laughs> but 
let's explain right out of the gate what you're talking about with wattage because if you're if somebody doesn't know what you mean by like hey this one's a two watt or a half watt and this one's five watt what's the difference and why does it matter watts watt yes watts, watts, watt about watts. watts. Watts are measure. This is the measure of RF power coming out of the antenna. And uh, let me tell you that don't get all wrapped up in wattage because more important than, or at least as equal to the importance of how much wattage you're putting out is how well you're interfacing that to the atmosphere, which is your antenna. And a good radio with, um, you know, 50 watts, I mean, a good antenna with 50 watts is going to outdo a uh, 100 watt radio with a poor antenna. So the, the interface to the real world is as important as the number of watts. But that this is the amount of power that your radio is putting out. Okay. And in general, more power is more gooder. I mean, you're going to so get it's out. Just a generality. Just a generality. Okay. And there are more factors. Got it. Yep. Now, GMRS, I don't have any hands-on experience with it, but I do hear a lot of people that are saying this really is a, is a game changer. It's a good thing. They're five watts. It's UHF. It's generally a line of sight radio, but it, um, they, they tend to work pretty well. You need a, a license, but the license is your whole family's license. So one license covers everybody in the family. And uh, you pay a little bit for the license. It's not bad. And a lot of four-wheeler groups use these GMRS radios. And you got to find out what works. If you're looking for local, around town uh, communications where you can talk from inside the Walmart to the parking lot uh, outside Walmart, well, you got to get out of FRS, but you can GMRS might work for you. They are five watts, and that does pretty good. So that's a little bit more power. I don't know a whole lot about it other than the license is required. It's just a matter of filling out some paperwork and sending some money in. And um, uh, let me let me ask you this: Is that the kind of so it's an upgrade from FMR or FMR? Yeah, you said FMR. FRS. FRS sorry. And this one is an upgrade from that now. But you mentioned a term line of sight. Does that mean that if there's trees in the way, it's not going to work? Well, we've all been in Walmart where we were talking to somebody on the phone and we walked into the ice cream aisle and all of a sudden lost our connection. That's because those big metal coolers blocked the, the radio signal real well. Oh. And line of sight is um, the lower the frequency the more the, uh, the, the radio waves will sort of arc and even bounce off of things like the ionosphere. But it's all smoke and mirrors to begin with anyway, and you need, to be a, you need your wizard's license to be radio certified because a lot of times your signal will bounce. And so there, the higher the frequency, the better it bounces. Think about a, a super ball versus a half inflated basketball. Gotcha. Um, you get more, almost all the energy back from a super ball where a basketball, you drop it from your shoulder heights and it might make your knees if it's, if it's not inflated fully. Uh, that, so in that respect, in an urban environment where you have a lot of hard surfaces, then the higher frequency UHF will bounce in between those buildings and actually get you further than, than the lower frequency. But in the general topography of Earth, the lower the frequency, the better it will reach something through obstructions. Well, let, let me ask you this, because we've talked about the two different, so far, two different kinds of radios. Mm -hmm. Do you have a selection of frequency band or are they fixed? These are channeled. These both FRS and GMRS work on preset channels, kind of like the old CBs. You had one through 19 or one through 40 uh, channel selections. They're predetermined channels where you can speak. They're okay. not, you can't dial them up to an odd frequency. Now, are the, because because if you're saying that uh, it sounds to me like you have to be aware of the terrain 
in which you want to use the radio as to what uh, radio you pick, what might be the best. Well, you do, but in all of these, they are there are part they are part their operating frequency is within a band of frequencies. Like UHF is ultra high frequency. VHF is very high frequency. I have no idea who put together all of these acronyms. HF is high frequency. Yeah, that's and, not confusing in any way. Oh, no, not at all. Not, and then there's, uh, uh, then there's LF, low frequency, and VLF, you can talk to submarines with that. Um, very low frequency. Okay. There's even an ultra low frequency. All right, so, so that we don't get too far off the rails, let's get refocused in that we don't have a selection of, we, we can't pick from a broad range of frequencies that are pre-dialed in for you on these radios yes. until you get to ham land, and then you That's can true. dial right. So, but let's let's continue on with the GS, what a, oh gosh, man. MRS. I'm losing all these, these <laughs> initials. That's and okay. Already. I, so, but I, now you're saying that that one, you do have to have a license, but it does cover your whole family. It's cheap to get, mm -hmm. and it's really just an upgrade from those things that you buy in Walmart. Right. It's a it's a better grade. It's 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 an upgrade. Now you also have CB radios, which are don't need a license. You can you know they're they're available, and everybody has the CBs are basically uh, five watts. Their advertised range is 10 miles, which again, you know, your experience or your mileage may vary. And we've all heard the, the claims that on a CB with only five watts, they talked from Alaska to Mexico. And all I can say is their signal must have bounced off the belly pan of a uh, UFO from Venus, uh, because that's, <laughs> there is a thing called trunking that can make some weird things like that happen, but it's in the area of weirdness, not an area of reliability. Okay. So CB is citizen band. Um, now those things, m might they have a place? I mean, I obviously truckers sure. use them. Sure. And they will reach, um, you know, a good number of miles out there. So if your area is only 10 miles and, you know, the best thing I can tell you is if you're looking for a prescribed area around where you live, then the best people to talk to about uh, cheap, reliable local communications are probably four-wheeler groups, four-wheeler clubs, because they have certainly come across all this, and they're not uh, kind of stuck on the only thing that works is the thing that I use. You know, I'm a ham operator, and... It's real easy for me to say the only thing that'll work is ham band. And you know what? That's just not true. There are other things that do work. And there are places where CB radios are a perfect fit. So, you know, give it a look, give it a try, find out from them what works best. Because okay. they're going to have a taste of all of them. And they'll be able to say in this area, this works. So there is no real magic wand to wave and say this works for everybody. No, that, is, that is true. Now, I will say which one is, which I believe is the most robust and gives you the greatest amount of options would be ham. Because in ham bands, you can select your frequency, you can control your power, you can get all kinds of very helpful um, uh, tricks and skills in building antennas and uh designing what you need to make work for you and within ham it's not a matter of oh i have a ham radio <laughs> which band which <laughs> which mode of communication are you going to use you can go cw which is morse code you can go fm which is frequency modulation you can go am which is amplitude modulation you can go single side band which is getting the most bang for your buck out of power you can go um, Skywave, where you're bouncing off of the uh, ionosphere and speaking to all parts of the world, called DXing. You can use NVIS, which you send your signals practically straight up and talk to the donut of area where they call the dead zone, where nobody else can communicate. Well, you can through that. So 
there's a lot of you can you can even go slow scan television. You could talk to the International Space Station. That's a lot of options for for ham radio. You don't get those well, with GMRS or any of the rest. The only thing you do with those is talk. Well, here here's the thing. Have you ever been on YouTube when you're like looking for a product? And so you start looking at the the review videos. And if things get so far to the weeds, you, you just get to the point where it's like, oh, you just convinced me not to buy a product, man. You just did. Oh, and, yeah. You think, yeah, the sky's well, the limit here, but it's easy to start with in a simple well, and form. That's what I'm asking you to do because you just gave me a truckload of information that sounds too complicated for me to uh, allot that amount of time to learn it. Sure. Well, that's the nice part about ham is you can start with just a bite and then. You know, the the sky's the limit for what you can learn, but you can get it working right out of the box. Well, describe that process, because right now I feel a little bit overwhelmed. Okay, I want to tell you about ham radio two meter. Most of the the bands of ham radio are in measured wavelength. And so I know how sound works. Yes. yeah, I know how sound works, and same so you're thing. saying that the, it's the same thing. The wavelength is how long it is and how yes. high it is, amplitude. Amplitude is how high. That's your power. Okay. Frequency is how long the the sine wave is. Gotcha. Okay. Now, ham radio for portable uh, communications, you're really talking about what they call handy talkies. Not walkie-talkies. Walkie-talkies are CBs. <laughs> They're the same thing, though. Um, it's a little handheld transceiver that can communicate on about 146 megahertz and has about five watts of power. And they say it can reach out about 15 miles. Now, unlike the GMRS and FRS and CBs, I have had um my mobile mounted in my truck with a magnet mount on the roof of a pickup truck and i have reached out 27 to well i don't know exactly how many miles it is but i know it'll take me over an hour to drive to where i spoke whoa and um and this here's texas we got 75 mile an hour speed limits so um alice texas is well over 30 miles from here and my friend Pete has, now again, he has a tall antenna. His antenna is over 100 feet up on his home. And it, but I was able to reach him from my mobile truck from my driveway here. Com- communication was clear as a bell. You can do that. See, it's a matter of, of what you're talking to. And if you need communication from your home, to let's say your children out in the back 40, you can put up a a mobile antenna up over the roof of your house and they can have a handy talkie and you're going to be able to reach them. There's a bell, no problem. Well, that's kind of the idea. So now, now let's, let's go back to this ham two foot. What, what, explain what it is that we're talking about. It is a little, basically a little walkie-talkie about as big as the old transistor well, radio. The handy talkie that you're talking about. So yes. it puts out a wavelength that is two meters. Yes. And the two meter band. Gotcha. Okay. It's all coming together now. Okay. <laughs> so, and they can be programmed. So you can program them to um, many different frequencies. And the one that I, I found is has four different preset frequency slots where you can program in so you just put p1 p2 p3 p4 and they will be preset frequencies that you would use a lot like one of them might be this is what the house radio is tied to the number two might be to connect you to what's called a repeater which is a whole nother amplifying you know game changer it and adds a great deal of of mileage to your ability to communicate and they're very commonly used right. and then and, and and you may have you know three different local repeaters that you can use and a repeater is just a, a a transceiver that has a very tall antenna 
you talk to it and it instantly resends your message out about 600 kilohertz different. So you listen on one frequency, transmit on the other, the repeater takes your little five watt radio and sends it out at several hundred watts. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All of a sudden your little handheld got powerful. Gotcha. Now, are those, let me ask you about the repeaters. Now, is that something that you personally have to own and place somewhere? Yeah. Like, Usually you don't. They're usually owned by various clubs or somebody who wants to get into that and they just do it. And they publish what their frequencies are and it's pretty much open to the whole community. Any license. Oh, okay. So it is it. open source because I was going to say. Yeah. You have to have like a Wi-Fi password, but nope. they're saying, nope. okay. They, they, there are private repeaters, but they're very rare. Most of the repeaters are open to any licensed ham to use. And you, you get on your ham club, you pull up the, like here in Corpus Christi, I can pull up a, a, a an internet page from um, the, the local ham club and it'll list all the repeaters, what the offsets are, what their frequencies are, what if it needs a, a tone to activate it, you know, and there are various ways they set them up, but it'll tell you all how to do it. And you can program your little radio to do all of that so that all you have to do is push P2 and you'll connect up to that repeater and you're lined up and it'll work. Gotcha. So um, for the beginner, somebody wanting to get in and you don't want to go the Walmart route, because that just sounds kind of like wasting money unless you're just, you know, Black Friday shopping or something right. inside the store. Um, and I've made that mistake and bought all those radios that say 50 mile range and then it won't even go from inside my house to inside my barn. Yes. Um, and I've made those mistakes, which prompted this phone call, which prompted this. So we're looking at those ham like the the brand that I always see is Baofeng, but I want to ask you about the brands, but also you can't just use one of these legally without taking a test, right? Exactly. You do need to be licensed. Now, the license, especially for the two meter band, is easy to accomplish. I mean, we have had, um, you know, we had a, a group of People that met, we talked about self-reliance uh, skills. We called it like 4-H for adults. And in our group, we have little old ladies who have taken the, the uh, um, and little old men <laughs> and, and young people who have taken these um, FCC exams for their technician license, which will get you into the two meter bands. And they studied a little bit, went down, took the test, passed it. No problem. Wow. It's not hard. It's more about learning the rules of etiquette than it is any technical stuff about radio transmission. Okay. So now there's a fee. Is it are you is it you talking sub hundred dollars? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Okay. Yes. Your okay. FCC license will be fifteen dollars. And that allows me then to use one of the handy walkies. Yep. And and I can talk as far as that will that radio is able, or uh, if there are repeaters, I can go on and get either find out their etiquette or their their way to log on and and use the repeaters and get more distance that way. Right now, the best way to do all of this is to look for and contact your local ham club. There's usually one in every town. There's hams all over. You find. Um, uh, a local ham and they call themselves Elmers because they're there. And I don't know where that term came from, but an Elmer is a ham who's willing to kind of help you through the process and help you get your equipment, help you get your testing, help you get set up and learn the protocols and things necessary to get you going on ham and encourage you. That's interesting because um, what I found, it, it sounds like uh, beekeepers because I'm a beekeeper. And when, when you get into beekeeping, you will find beekeepers that they want to invest in you. They want to mentor yes. you and they want to grow the community. And, and it's a very cool thing, but it sounds very similar. Very similar. It's a very uh, uh, helpful, accommodating 
group of people who at the, at the same time are very vigilant at bird dogging anybody operating illegally and pointing the FCC to them. So, oh, they, it's, this is our are, club, pal. Get out. <laughs> no, it's not our club. It's that the the uh, the ham group doesn't want their hobby to be destroyed like CB was. Oh, CB used to be a licensed thing, and there was protocol and etiquette and things allowed, and you're not allowed to swear. You're not allowed to to uh, you know get in people's face and get racial and all of this stuff, uh, and the FCC didn't enforce it, and we all know that, you know, yeah. citizens ban turned very un-citizen-like and very definitely not family-friendly. You never turned on the radio when your children were in the car because the language coming across there was pretty, pretty coarse. Pretty salty. Nobody wanted that happening to ham bans, so they're very vigilant at guarding that gate. Now, let me ask you this. Okay, so... If if you are operating those radios without a license, because I can tell you this, I bought a Baofeng handy thing like you're saying years ago when we first started into the prepping thing, because I thought, well, I'll just get it now and then I'll learn how to deal with it later. And I just I have it and it's somewhere in my prep cache because I just I got it and forgot about it. What is the penalty if you get caught operating it without a license? Well, it's all a matter of whether or not the FCC wants to pursue it, but you can get jail time for that. <laughs> it's a felony. It's actually oh a federal boy, offense. Really? No, no kidding. It is the Federal Communications Commission, and you are violating federal law by operating in those frequencies without a license. Okay, now I got to be honest. I gotta... are, they're not going to they're not going to throw the book at you for a little Bofang five watt radio. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, with all the crimes that are committed now, and they would yeah. they, they would go after you for that. Well, it would no. make perfect government sense, they but it seems silly. However, down here where we are, we had a guy that was operating illegally, and uh, he made, you know, he would do things intentionally trying to, to cause oh. harm. He's a troll, okay? Oh. And, and he ended up crossing the line to the point of making death threats to people. Oh, my. And the ham group, they are very good. They actually play games like this called um, a fox hunt, where somebody goes out with a, a radio and he keys up. He's a licensed ham, but every so often he will key up and give his call sign. And you have to triangulate with directional finders to locate him. So it's a hide and go seek with radios. Oh, fun. And they used that. They found where this guy was, pointed the FCC. That man went to jail. Whoa. So, okay, yes, lesson learned. Be Brad, serious. Brad, get your license before you turn on the Baofeng. Okay. Well, let, me, let me give you a, a bigger important thing with that Baofeng. Uh, I, I watched a video where a guy was getting ready to do an online test comparison between the Baofeng and uh, a Yesu that just costs a little bit more. That's a, a major actual radio manufacturer. Um, not that Baofeng isn't, but Baofeng does not comply with either um, mill specs for ruggedness nor FCC for spurious emissions. And the moment he keyed up his Baofeng radio, his video camera died. And it turned out the spurious emissions from that radio damaged his camera. What? That's uh, crazy. Did you not? That wow. thing had wireless connection and Bluetooth stuff is susceptible to that. And those Baofangs put out some pretty nasty spurious emissions. Wow. They're real, they're real dirty. And you can destroy a lot of your very expensive equipment with that very inexpensive radio. That's funny. So, well, let's talk a little bit about brand names because you've mentioned two. I, I've mentioned that the Baofeng thing, I got it just basically because I was like, well, I better have this and, you know, if I, if I'll, I'll learn how to use it later, but um, I've never even fired it up, but they, they are overwhelming in the amount of features and the specs 
when I went on to buy this thing off of Amazon, I was just like, I had no idea what I was buying. I just bought the thing that looked like it had the most doodads and gidgets and gizmos for, oh, yeah. for 80 bucks. Yep. Well, how do you now, go about finding the right one? About 30 something dollars on sale now. Well, how do you find the right one? Well, you don't buy Baofeng for one. No! <laughs> Clearly, we're It'll not enforced by your other audio equipment than you are ready to afford. Clearly, this video is not endorsed by Baofeng. No, it is not. And I would not recommend that radio. It's not rugged for one. And number two, it's not it, it doesn't behave itself within the bands of doing what it's supposed to do. It does other things that can. Yeah, I wouldn't even have one in my house um, because for just a little bit more there, you can get. A Yesu that is very well made, FCC compliant, mil spec requirement uh, uh, rated, and you can get uh, a two meter Yesu for for seventy dollars, and for ten dollars more, you can get one that's both VHF and UHF. Okay. A dual band. It's got every feature that Baofeng has. Eighty bucks today, <laughs> and. Man, what a deal! Well, that's that's pretty funny. Yeah, I and and not knowing, it's it's you just get it's the sticker, you know, like if you're buying a car and you don't know what the heck is under the hood and you wouldn't know anyway because I'm not a mechanic. Well, then yeah. I just look at the well. This this has look at all these features. Boy, that sounds impressive. Yeah. Uh, how do you, where would you go other than clearly this video, which has been a wealth of information? But where do you go to get informed? Okay, there is uh, there are lots of online places you can get these. One of my favorite sources, and I'm not endorsed by them, Gigaparts is a company that sells audio equipment, all kinds of different things. But one of the things they sell is ham radio gear. And they sell antennas and program, all kinds of stuff for this. And you can get the Yesu FT65R for about $79 and change, so I'm saying $80 from Gigaparts. You can get it today. Okay, and I'm sure that there might miraculously be a link to the Amazon uh, link down in the description below, yeah. but that's for a whole However, other- However, check, check Amazon's prices and check Gigaparts. Sure. Um, you know, see, shop around. If you can get a better deal, get it. But Yesu yep. is one of the very good um, um, top end, radio manufacturers that follow the rules okay. they are not made in china they are i think japan but they're very high quality and rugged all right now as we round this video out before we go i want to say thank you for your time but last word here first of all go see Ty teller woods channel it's the bulletproof pastor check it out Go ahead and subscribe. He's got a lot of great information on there. A lot of stuff you're going to want to check out. Um, he's also an author. And I want I want to, uh, before we head out, I really want you to plug your books because they're great preparedness books. You've also got some fiction books. You weren't expecting for me to say this, so this is completely unsolicited. But please plug your books. Okay. And this is not because I was prepared for this. I just happened to have them here because I was honestly reading my own books. I like them. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to my own music. <laughs> I do, in fact, read my own material. I've read them more than once. The preparedness manual that you're, yep. you're talking out about is 11th hour preparedness. Here it is, folks. Look at that. Making choices while we can. It is available on Amazon. And um, uh, title on the title it, or the on the cover it says, "How would you live if our society suddenly changed?" Well, in the last couple of weeks, our society has suddenly changed, hasn't it? Yep. And, and we're is, only seeing the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely, my book has become very popular, and its copyright is nine is 2013, and that was the second edition. So, seven years later, all of a sudden, this book got real popular, like. Oh, where was this all my life? Well, it was in the shelf that you weren't well, paying attention and, and one to. thing I want to say about it is that uh, the thing I think I appreciate most, the, the information is there, no doubt. It's not, it's, it's very, very easy to understand 
but it's also the thing I like the most is that it's not based in fear. It's not trying to scare you into going out and buying a bunch of Bic lighters. It's not, it's not about that. It's, it's here's what it is. Now here's how you do something about it. Yes. I don't tell you what to think or what to buy. I, I help you with the options of choices. Yes. It works good, better, and best. If you do a little bit, that's a, of yep. course, there's always the uh, um, leprechauns riding unicorn, the, ab the absolute uh, the epitome of the best place in the world to be, and that we call the best. So there's always something you can do to improve. But and the want... other one, second book is this one. It's called Days of Ragnarok. There are people who say, I don't like textbooks i want a story well here you go this is like a uh, little house on the prairie you follow a story and you learn a bunch of skills that i hate to tell you though pastor that is not like little house on the prairie that is nothing like little house on the prairie <laughs> it's not as calm and quiet as little there's house a on lot the prairie. more there's a lot more uh what do we call that oh apocalyptic stuff yes it is a post-apocalyptic but it teaches you skills through a story that is like gotcha. Little House on the Prairie, especially yeah, for just, just, yeah, yeah. She's not, Laura Ingalls is not showing up in that in that tale in any way. No, no, no. This is not uh, kittens and puppy dogs. No. Okay. However, it is family friendly. It is not going to offend your grandma to read. I don't do that either. So, and then uh, the follow on was this one. There we go. <laughs> this is the the next book in the series, which is Realm of Ragnarok, which is the sequel, and it picks up right where the other one left off and goes um, through a very the the first one is Man Against Nature. They how they accomplished uh, getting uh, making things work to to eke out an existence over nature, right? And the second one is two communities from very different backgrounds. One of them kind of avoided all the trouble by being in a canyon where they had to learn how to get food from nature. And the second one was right in harm's way and had to deal with all the humanity destruction that happened. Wow. And uh, then these two communities joined together and helped each other heal. Yep. And so I call the second one um, SEAL Team 6 meets Mr. Rogers. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yes, so, yes, absolutely. We will most certainly have links down below for both of those, or all three of those books. Uh, but as we round out, tell me, give me the two minutes on why it's important that we learn more about two-way communications. Sell me on it. Make me believe it. Real simple. Your cell phone is going to crash. And... The greatest comfort that I got being separated from my wife down here in an apocalyptic realm of a post-hurricane disaster was that I heard her voice, and it was unreal that what that did for me. And not knowing, not having communication is probably the single most powerful motivator to making bad choices. Wow. That most certainly is a motivating one minute statement. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what's that's what's been on my mind. Uh, and, and I don't think we're anywhere near through. I think we're just seeing in the beginning of what the world could look like in the next six months or worse. And and heaven forbid, what if this is only a test run? You know, what if what if we're looking at the shape of things to come? Oh, I think we certainly are looking at the shape of things to come. I've never known uh, this kind of thing to, uh, well, that's the worst that'll ever get. Right. <laughs> I've been in a lot of bad situations. Yeah. <laughs> and they seem uh, to tell keep coming. Black Plague. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I certainly do appreciate your time. And this is a topic that I think needs to be looked into more. And it's also a topic that could not be dealt with in one hour or, or because there's a lot of information. But I think what I'm getting at 
we're getting is find a mentor and then delve into exactly what your needs are. But do that. Don't just go, well, boy, that was a nice video. I should get to that someday. Do it. Absolutely. So, it's talking about it or thinking about it. Right now, everybody is preparedness minded. But uh, two weeks after this whole thing is over, most people are just going to go back to life as usual and pretend like it never happened and didn't learn anything from it. And then the next one will be worse. Yep. Well, thank you again. Bulletproof Pastor, uh, go to don't, go and sub to the channel. You're going to love it. And uh, again, thank you so much, Tyler. It's been good, Brad. Thank you very much. All right.